If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bybot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. Time for round two. On the draw with two drop, three drop, three drop, five drop, everything fine. Definitely not a mulligan. I need to draw another island before I can cast Biden of Thassa, but that's about the only complaint I have about this hand. And the, the importance of two drops is pretty clear in, in this kind of hand, being on the draw. Not having the, the Reckless Reveler would, would really be kind of bad. I don't know where my, my opponent is playing a Triton Shore Thief. I hope that he isn't following it up with an ordeal. Um, that's just always pretty bad to play against. On the other hand, a 1-2 vanilla creature is not something I'm too concerned about. Follow it up with Leonin Snarecaster. That looks fine. My my deck of 3 mana 2-3s is pretty well suited to to beat what my opponent is doing here. I could offer to block uh, to trade um, with the Snarecaster next turn, which I'm probably doing. And because Deepwater Hypnotist is best on offense, I'm just going to offer the Hypnotist for the small chance that my opponent is going to play an artifact creature later on that I uh, want to be destroying with the Revelers. It's not like my opponent will let the Hypnotist untap if I don't want, uh, if, he, if he doesn't want it to happen. The Gonna Band Elder, yep, yeah. resolves. Very aggressive, my opponent. I could trade the I could trade the hypnotist for for this for the band elder next turn, and the problem is if I play one of my good three drops, then those are the creatures that I um, I want to have to hold off the quote unquote bad creatures my opponent has. So taking three here to have another blocker for the band elder and then have a creature that just holds off these creatures is a fine play. On the other hand, cards like Dauntless Onslaught would just blow me out um, then. I can also just trade my two drops, which is a fair trade, and then cast Reckless Revelers to, to trade with the Band Elder. Given how many tricks there are in this format, I think this is a more reasonable line that doesn't lose to, to so, many, so many cards in the format. Clearly, if my opponent puts puts hopeful Eilon onto the, the band elder, then I'll I'll be taking a bit of damage before I'm able to Rage of Perforous it. So far things have worked out quite nicely. There's a chance that my opponent is on Divine Verdict here. But I, I clearly have no reason to to even attack, so I'm I'm fine just sitting here and my opponent doesn't cast anything, which is which is a good sign. Loyal Pegasus is also fine. I don't think I want to Spark Troll just yet. I want to hold that as a nice trick. The Loyal Pegasus won't be able to attack alone, so having Spark Troll available is pretty nice. I want the, the attack of Loyal Pegasus to be a, a true suicide mission for my opponent. There's a there's a good chance that it's not even attacking, so Flitter Step Eidolon. Can't be blocked. So so much about uh, suicide missions, but the the plan was the plan was solid i feel like i'm just going to take the uh, kill the pegasus now i don't want to take additional damage if i if i don't have to and scrying before my next turn is also quite nice my opponent gets to see how how i would have blown him out now i, I won't be able to block this so Now there's the Retraction Elix. So 
Rage of Perforos looks like a ha, like it has a pretty good target here. I get to scry so then I can attack for a bunch. My opponent has the short thief to trade with the revelers, which I probably don't want to have happen. I could allow this to hit me once to get ahead in the race a little bit though. I think that's a fine fine trade. Omen speaker, I I think I'm I'm almost always going to leave on top. It's cry, so the flame speaker adept uh, triggers, but if you square once and see an omen speaker, it, it gives you a square too. So it's it's basically just the the superior option. I I feel like I'm leaving myself a bit open towards um, auras or bestow creatures. But my current blockers wouldn't have been able to to deal with them anyway, especially given that there is an unblockable creature on my opponent's side. I want to I want to be dealing a bit a bit of damage here. The worst card I can think of is um, the white emissary Helios emissary. Now that my opponent has uh, his seventh land, it looks like it's just a Stratus walk, creating a one-two flyer that cannot block my ground creatures. I'm fine with that. And hopeful Eidolon. So that was definitely a good draw uh, of the Stratus Walk. Now I can't block any of these creatures. And what I will do is use the Crackling Triton to deal with um, to deal with the Flitter Step. I'm drawing into the Omen Speaker, and I'm just casting the Omen Speaker as well. That way I will, I will have more information and I get to deal additional damage. I can always Retraction Helix later on in the game. Even if that leaves me a bit weak towards top decked. Towards top decked um, Bistow creatures. I'm keeping the Rage. Uh, this seems like a card that I want in this kind of matchup. And now I'm getting in for damage. I have to kill the Flitter Step Eidolon before my opponent draws his card. That means that hopeful Eidolon will be able to attack me. But that's only relevant if my opponent has another Bestow creature. And so far, there is no way I'm, I'm losing this race with the Rage of Perforce still in my hand and the Retraction Helix to deal with anything my opponent might be up to. There is also no reasonable block that my opponent has available. I think not attacking with the Short, short Thief is most likely a mistake. Let's see what happens here. I want to hold back Omen Speak so that I can always Retraction Helix. I'm fine trading Hopeful Eidolon for Reckless Reveler. That looks like a, a fair trade. The, the less creatures my opponent has, the less likely it is that I'm, I'm getting into trouble because my opponent top decks bestow creatures. So Tessin Battle Priest. And a land. So I know that my opponent has nothing here. So I'm I'm just winning. With Rage of Perforos uh, dealing four, five, six, seven. So I'm playing against white blue evasion heroic, but my opponent didn't really show the, the good heroic creatures and also no ordeals. So pro probably the weaker part of, of his deck. 
Anal looks solid against the Flitter Step Eidolon. Point of Betrayal I don't like too much against White Blue. And the other cards are not important in, in the matchup. So Anal is getting in there. I, I need all my spells or most of my spells. I could take take out Stratus Walk. I want my, my I want my curve, especially on the draw. So Mnemonic Wall is an option. Or Stratus Walk is an option. I kind of like the evasion. I think the evasion is important. Let's take out Mnemonic Wall because if I'm getting into trouble, it's probably because of cheap evasive threats and not um, flooding out and not having enough value to work with. Let's see what Nummy Pooh Bear is up to. This is a great hand. I've been I've been fortunate with my starting hands. Can't really complain. Once again, two true drops, so should be able to trade with anything. No loyal Pegasus either. Oh, there's the there's the Spark Jolt, which could actually take down a two drop from my opponent. Oh, it's a Resco Sun Guide, so that's not it's not happening. I don't value the athlete's trigger very highly in this in my deck so i'm more like i'm more willing to trade arena athlete for a resco sun guide than to trade the reveler which might have an application in the in the late game with that with a hand that has a seagull's revenge i'm not too concerned about have, having single single creatures not not be able to block This is fine, my opponent is investing a last breath to take out Arena Athlete just to untap once with the Sun Guide. And this is actually the reason why the Sun Guide is so good in this in this format is that it forces your opponent to interact with you. It forces you to your opponent to block or to suffer the consequences. Now, I, I would have always blocked, blocked this creature with the Arena Athlete, but if it was another random creature attacking me, I could have also decided I don't want to run into some kind of trick, so I'm, I'm not blocking. I'm going to get some, get some value here by spending the mana on this, and then I hopefully can draw... Uh, into a, an island to have retraction helix up. That would be that would be the perfect course of action. But I'm I'm fine. I'm I'm not falling behind here. I'm I'm getting a, a three one, so I'm I'm happy to do that. Now this draw was not is not helping me right now. On the other hand, there my opponent is down to two cards, so I I only have to be scared of of good bestow creatures at this point, and maybe some of the tricks that that uh, target two creatures. So, Triton Tactics and Dauntless Onslaught. Uh, drawing a land would have been, would have been really nice here. So far, I, I can't really, can't really complain about my draws though. I'm also on 20, so the only thing that's really scary is, is Bestow Creatures. This is the attack that I was scared of. Uh, it is, I have a very easy block of just uh, trying to kill both of these creatures, but they will, then I lose absolutely horrible, horribly to both of the tricks that I just mentioned. So I don't think I can, I can make that block. I will offer the elemental rather than the Nick Smith, simply because I have the retraction helix in my hand. Okay, nothing happened here. I guess that's a good sign. Let's just drop the revelers, keeping open the helix, and feigning a bit of weakness because I don't uh, have any more lands. I hope I'm not getting grip tighter or anything, but I, I would have expected my opponent to grip tight earlier. 
when he had the chance. Now I'm feeling I'm feeling quite good about this. I can respond to any bestowing by bouncing a creature, and I can just block the Sun Guide with the Reveler. Uh, because of the Helix, I'll be able to respond to any kind of trick. Okay, Divine Verdict is, is a really weak trick for my opponent to have here. It's not it's not even a trick, it's just destroy my creature. So how do I how do I do this? I can bounce my own reveler and recast it, but I want to be using the Nick Smith. So having this creature in my hand seems really bad. I'm just gonna bounce the Sun Guide, even though it doesn't do a lot. Well wait. I could just do nothing. I think that's actually better. I have I have I have things to do with my mana. So if if I do if I create a 3 1 red elemental token or if I play the crackling triton it's actually not much of a difference. So I'm I'm fine with if my opponent spends his mana this way because it allows me to attack with a Nick Smith, which is more more valuable than than bouncing something here. That would have wouldn't wouldn't have been a good play. So here it's crackling triton or flame speaker adapt. I think the adept is what I want. Still haven't drawn a land, so I'm kind of hesitant towards making another elemental token. I absolutely have to draw an island to be to be absolutely safe in this in this scenario. And at some point I will want to will want to cast my spells rather than creating elemental tokens. Okay, Flutterite Serpent, that seems pretty ambitious. It's a good it's a good answer to the Nick Smith though. I will not make I will not make a token. The 3 1 wouldn't affect the board uh, much. And like I said, I want to I want to get going on this board. If I scry with the flame speaker, I still have the Retraction Helix available, and I get to attack with Flamespeaker Adept. I can respond to any kind of aura shenanigans, but having the Flamespeaker on defense means I could just block the Flood Tide Serpent if necessary. That seems more powerful to me. But then I need to have the Scry available, so I need Spark Jolt and Retraction Helix up. Doesn't seem That doesn't seem bad. Seagull's Revenge, not the best card in the current situation, so... It's actually not clear if I want to draw all these lands. The revenge would be would be fine. It, it definitely wouldn't be bad. It it just it doesn't excite me too much. On the other hand, mana with ma additional mana with a Nick Smith is also quite valuable. So I guess I guess I'll keep this. And the fact that I can I can plan ahead for a Sea God's Revenge in two turns is what what makes me want to do that. Let's see if there's an enchantment coming down. Maybe a flitter step eidolon or something of that of that sort. Otherwise dropping flat tide serpent just doesn't seem like a good idea. Okay, it's hopeful eidolon. So I let this resolve. Then the flat tide serpent might attack. But it wouldn't even be wouldn't even be a great attack. It would be quite the expensive attack. Okay, instead there is just just no attacks. And I know that I will be bouncing my opponent's stuff pretty soon. The one thing I can do is use the Retraction Helix now. But then I'm kind of forced to kill the Hopeful Eidolon also. I, I would just give my opponent the value, which I don't want. I wouldn't be surprised to see a land and a flitter step idle on from my opponent. Would make sense given what I've what I've seen so far. There have there have to be some kind of cards in my opponent's hand. Nothing. 
Yeah, th this this screams six drop to me. The question is, do I want this six drop to come down next turn, or do I want my opponent to try to cast it, respond to it, and then untap into Seagull's Revenge? I actually like the latter a bit better. I feel that my opponent is going to be forced to act here pretty soon, or actually wants to be acting here pretty soon. And I had the feeling that he was just waiting for his, for the for the sixth land. Okay, and this is exactly what's what's going on here. So this uh, sun guide will get uh, double strike. I could use crackling triton and spark Joel to take it out, but then I have the one ones to to worry about without a way to to deal with them. So this is going to be attacking uh, clearly. No, still no, still no. Um, interesting. So, Retraction Helix, Bouncing the Sun Guide, could give me a 3-1 creature, and then I still have all the tricks available, and these are just lying around. On the other hand, I, then I, I definitely want to be bouncing the Flat Tide Serpent uh, soon, soonish. I can also just see God's Revenge, my opponent's whole team. And then there is two one ones on my opponent's side of the board. His most likely play is then to cast Flat Tide Serpent to kind of uh, get them back into the action, which I have I have pretty good responses to. So I'm not going to spend a Retraction Helix here, but just uh, Sea God's Revenge, my opponent's board. Now I can even hold up Spark Jolt, which is more important than Retraction Helix. I even get to scry, so that's that's nice. Ghostbait Eidolon has double strike, so it can just block the Nick Smith and live. I could Spark Jolt it, and my opponent could only trade with the Hopeful Eidolon. I don't want I don't want my opponent to trade with the Nick Smith at all. If he's smart, he's blocking the Nick Smith with both of his creatures, but there's a very good chance that only the Eidolon is blocking, and then I have a pretty sweet play uh, with my Spark Jolt. Yeah, uh, this is a mistake. I think that the double block is what, what you have to do, but I can I totally understand why my opponent uh, blocks like this. It just appears like it's the superior block. The thing is, if if this works out, then it's the right block. If it doesn't work out, you would still be happy to trade Hope Flylon for Sator Nick Smith, at least from my perspective. So we got some nice we got some nice value there. Interesting. It looks like my opponent wants to have four mana on tap rather than getting the serpent into play. I'm not going to risk the Nick Smith again. I now have the retraction helix to to make it work. Could just be a divine verdict on Flame Speaker Adept, maybe. Uh, targeting Crackling Triton wouldn't make wouldn't make a lot of sense. Okay, Grip Tide. Putting this on top of my deck. Am I fine with that? I could also just bounce my own Flame Speaker here with the Retraction Helix. I've I've two anyway, and I want to be using it this turn, so I'm going to generate a little bit of value here. That means that my Crackling Triton can be double blocked. But I'm I'm fine with that. Basically, gaining a card and an, another elemental token here. I can also still retraction helix with my omen speaker if I want to. Don't think that's what I want to be doing though. 
Yeah, this is a good use for Triton Short Thief. And the Nick Smith continues to do to do a very good job here. Opponent down to two cards. One of them is the Serpent that I'm most likely bouncing just to get in some more damage. And then one unknown card. With Crackling Triton, I can always just suicide something into the Serpent and then kill it. So I'm not, not too concerned. Okay, only land this time. So let's get rid of the Serpent. I also don't want it to attack and return the Eilon or something, something unfortunate. Let's see, Omen Speaker could theoretically attack here as well. The Hopeful Eidolon, I don't think the Hopeful Eidolon is uh, holding back and then doing something crazy here. Except for maybe if, if my opponent has a Bestow Creature, but I'm very sure that he hasn't ha doesn't have the Bestow Creature in hand, so this looks fine. It is kind of sad to lose multiple creatures to to the serpent, so I'm not I'm not 100% sure that I should be attacking very aggressively into it, especially now that there is no enchantment left for my opponent to return. Okay, another island means that my opponent is on 11. The Elementals are doing a pretty good job, but there is quite a lot of creatures on my opponent's side of the board. So Triton plus one of these, and then I have only the Flame Speaker add up to really push through, which means that the Nick Smith is not going to be uh, getting to be untapped anytime soon. Could be a reason to just stop attacking here. I always like to be um, to be as aggressive as possible, and I'm kind of scared of my opponent just top decking. A, real, a very good um, bestow creature and killing me with it. So, uh, this is this is a close call. I'm definitely losing some value and I have two Rage of Perforosis left in my deck. This is, I think this is the argument for, for not attacking. I have a lot of ways to deal with the Flat Tide Serpent without losing, without losing card advantage. Now it, it is down to down to the draws. I have I have a lot of good draws though. More more scry effects. Okay, my opponent just casting the idol on. That's yeah, that's a weird decision. The one one unblockable doesn't do anything. Whereas making the sun guide unblockable would have at least uh, forced my hand a little bit. I don't think you want to be casting this for for two. That doesn't seem that doesn't seem uh, right to me. Even just putting it on Flutter Serpent would have been fine. Create a create a five five to work with. Clearly not not to attack with, but then you only need to draw something else, and you have a five five unblockable. Here we go. This is another Flame Speaker Adapt. This is interesting. I actually think it's better to put it on the bottom. There's so many good cards I can draw, and a 2 3 for 3 is just not really what I'm looking for. This could mean that I'm drawing more lands, but I I think that's actually pretty unlikely. I like attacking with the Flame Speaker here. 4, four 3 first strike is really tough for, for my opponent to deal with. And if I get in 4 damage, that's that's pretty huge. I still have uh, sufficient blockers for anything that my opponent wants to, might want to do. One thing that could happen here is an attack for three. Now the question is, do I want to prevent this from happening by killing Flitterstep Eidolon? 
My opponent is on seven. I think I just I just allow it if my opponent wants to do that. I can definitely take three damage here without it being a, a big problem. And I have I have uh, six attackers, so my opponent is is in a risky position with the tri Triton being being not evasive but pretty pretty good. All right, and now not the card I wanted to see. It might be good. It might turn out to be quite good, but uh, I'm I'm not happy to draw it. So with these six creatures, well, two of them are Omen speakers, so I'm not I'm not punching through for for a lot of damage. I'll just pass the turn then and delay things a little bit longer. My feeling is that I should kill the Flitterstep Eidolon, because then I'm not taking any damage, and this seems to be the, the most scary card. I like the Crackling Triton, but I think I'm, I'm so favored if the game goes longer that um, I should be doing this. It's always diff difficult to decide if you want to hold, wait until your opponent can attack, which plays around Bestow, or if you want to do it before your opponent draws, which plays around uh, Combat Tricks. I decided uh, to just... Uh, do it like this. I drew a flyer. It's only one power flyer, but it is going to start getting in there. I have a, a very nice backup from anything that would enable Flat Tide Serpent. Either the the draw card auras or well, bestow creature. I, countering a bestow creature with another would, would be absolutely huge. My opponent could have a Divine Verdict here. This is a card that opponents can always be holding. But but you cannot really tell if it's Lance or, or Divine Verdicts if you haven't been attacking or blocking for a while. Lagona Band Elder. Yep, gain zero. There's the Rage of Perforos that I was waiting for. I'm going to try to take out the Flat Tide Serpent, which also allows me to scry, so the Flame Speaker Adept is going to be good. I'm, I'm being very selective about the cards I'm drawing now. This might see, seem weird because I have so many lands, and drawing more lands is definitely not what I want to have happen, but... I now need only the highest impact cards, and a 2-mana two 2-1 two has effectively zero impact. So even though I would rather draw that than a land, I want to find the, the key cards in my deck instead. I forgot the name, but I have the 3-mana have the uh, guy that scries for 2-mana, so this would turn the Flamespeaker Adept into an absolutely monstrous card. All right, Observant Outseed would turn this into a 5-4 Vigilance. That's not even too threatening, but I, I'm, I'm not going to wait for a better a better target to annul. Keeping the, the momentum on, on my side of the board. And who knows what my what my opponent is holding. I I think it should be it should be lands, but you can never be sure. Biden of Thassa is a pretty good draw here, clearly. I'm going to be uh, quite conservative. Oh, is this dying? It is. So next turn, I'm, I'm forcing my opponent to attack. Uh, I will, I'll do the blocks that seem seem profitable to me. And then the, the Biden should, should take it home. Which is another card that I could draw and, and uh would have been would be much better than than my two drops. My opponent hasn't been attacking at all. So I have to assume that he doesn't have anything here. Alright, concedes the match. Has seen enough. 
All right, good, good. Time for the finals.